and how the body did that is what the Nobel Prize was awarded for. So let's back up to these two researchers from Dallas. You know, they're analyzing these little addresses or these little zip codes of molecules that surround all cells. And if you blew one of those little things up under a big microscope, what they found was that it was nothing but a protein molecule with a whole bunch of little molecules attached to it. Now, there might have been, you know, thousands and thousands of molecules on this molecular chain right here attached to this protein molecule, but they identified that all of these were all one of eight individual molecules. One of them they identified right off the bat, mannose. The molecule discovered in aloe vera in 1981. Secondly, they identified galactose and glucose. And there's a way overabundance of that in our diet. But it took them until 1996 to actually break the code and identify the other five. And in 1996, they identified all eight of these as what they call monosaccharides. Mono means one, saccharide means sugar. Simple sugars that your body utilizes for the production of what they call glycoproteins. Glyco is a Greek word for sugar, meaning sweet, attached to a protein molecule. Glycoproteins are these little addresses or these zip codes of molecules that surround all cells in the human body. Now, when they begin to look at this and really identify what these were, you know, they found that of the eight essential sugars that your body has got to have, now I want to, I want to Make that real clear. You have to have all eight of these sugars. But of the eight essential sugars that your body must have, they found that there are only two of them that are common in our civilized diets around the world. The other six are virtually gone. And the only two that are left in the diet is galactose and glucose, and there's a way overabundance of that. But the other six are gone due to mass commercial farming, green harvesting, worst of all, the way they process and, and strip our grains and... and, and, and you know, processed foods nowadays, as well as preservatives. Preservatives kill the live component in food. And only in a live, pre-digested form from the plant will they work in the human body. Now, maybe I ought to back up here real quick. You know, I'm talking about sugar, right? And, you know, my wife's a diabetic. And I'm hearing this story, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, we can't do this. This is sugar. Well, I want to make sure people understand that there's over 200 carbohydrates, around 209 carbohydrates, at least that we know of in nature. And for the most part, most of them are called digestible carbohydrates. You know, like your pasta and your bread and your baked potato. You know, a white baked potato with no butter, no sour cream, nothing on it, will convert to about a quarter cup of sugar in the body. It's called high glycemic. So most carbohydrates are just that. They are digestible. The body converts them to glucose for sugar. But these eight essential sugars are what they call pre-digested, meaning live in the plant. And in live in the plant, you know, they go immediately to the body for the production of glycoproteins. The body doesn't convert them or digest them like you would think of table sugar or pastas or breads for people counting carbohydrates or diabetics or anything like that. So they have nothing to do with sugars or carbohydrates, you know, in, in that arena. These are totally, totally different. Now, you know, most of the, even though the, galact the galactose and glucose that's still in our diet, most of that is digestible because, you know, it's not live in the plant. You know, what does the good book tell us? Eat from the fields, right? And for, you know, hundreds of years, that's the way we ate. And today we don't. You know, we started with the birth of the TV dinner and right on up to what we, you know, we have fast foods and all this stuff today, which this stuff is just virtually gone from our, from our diet and, and from our food chain. And I even have a gentleman that, that deals a lot in the agricultural industry that will tell you that over 50% of the farmlands in the United States is, is virtually sterile. There's no minerals or, or uh you know, uh, nutrients in the soil to actually feed the plants. So we've got a real problem here with our food chain. So this company, this one nutraceutical research and development company that identified all eight of these, put together the first clinical application of all eight of these sugars. And their theory was, you know, let's just provide the body with a supplemental blend of all eight of them in their natural state like they are in plants, and let's see what the body will do with them. So that's what they did. A clinical application basically just means it's a product, you can take the lid off and you can swallow it. Now step one, once they, they, they identified all this, even with the first molecule, was let's get this to the FDA. Let's get this approved, let's get this out through the medical world, and let's just see what impact it's going to make. And you see, that's why you're hearing about this like this. 
because when they did the FDA protocol studies on this, they found that, number one, it was non-toxic. I mean, a newborn baby can eat this by the tablespoonful. It's not going to hurt anybody. It was, as a matter of fact, newborn babies do because five of these sugars are in mother's breast milk and the body's making the other three. They're the spark of life for a baby's immune system. And we know what happens to babies that are not breastfed. They have higher incidences of asthma, allergies, and chronic health problems throughout their entire life, not just when they're born. So it's critical for a baby. Secondly, they ran tests for what they call P450 activity, meaning drug interaction. So if you're a diabetic and you're taking insulins or oral medications or you're you know, taking blood pressure regulating medicine or, or breathing treatments due to pulmonary dysfunction or autoimmune disease, taking steroids such as prednisones or, or even over-the-counter medications, there was no interaction with any type of pharmaceutical medication. So at that point, the FDA classified this as a food, not a drug. So, you know, at that point, you know, the FDA informed this nutraceutical research company that if they marketed this through the medical world to treat disease, that they'd shut them down. I mean, you know, if you're not going to go through 10 years of drug trials and $300 million on each individual claim, <clears throat> which, you know, diabetes would be one claim, cancer would be another, fibromyalgia, lupus, each one was an individual claim, 10 years of of studies and three hundred million dollars well being a non-toxic food you know you just can't treat disease okay because in order to treat disease in the United States of America you must be a medical doctor prescribing a pharmaceutical medication licensed by the FDA you can't treat disease with food so they were basically told you know put it out in the health food store you can call it a food supplement but you can't tell people this is going to help them with their cancer or their diabetes or their caucus or the bonkers or whatever's wrong with them you can't make claims like that now let's go back to this technology right here. You know, God in all of his wisdom, you know, he built a pretty good machine here. I mean, most of us would agree with that. And really the only thing that's wrong with it is what you have or have not been doing to it, depending on how you want to look at that. But he also, I think he has a sense of humor. I think, you know, he knew that man was going to be taking care of this machine. Somewhere along the line, we're probably going to mess something up. I mean, we did, dramatically, with our food chain. I mean, we're humans. We make mistakes. So, you know, there's a backup system in the body. And that's a point that I want to make real clear here. You have to have these eight sugars. That is not up for debate. If you don't have these sugars in the food you're eating, or you're not supplementing them somehow, then your body has got to make them. There's a backup system that will actually make these. Because the production of glycoproteins is a physiological function that all mammals must perform, or they're going to plant you in the ground. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying if you don't take this product, you're going to die. I'm just stating that this is the function that we must perform or we will die. So, you know, what they're finding is, is that there's a lot of things that are interrupting the body's ability to make these sugars. And it's something that we know of as toxins. Toxins are everywhere. And they're cumulative. They don't go away. A little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, a little bit the next day, and they're cumulative. And pretty soon, I like what one gentleman says, you know, you don't have a disease. You're just starved toxic and stressed and what they're finding is one of the most noted far, um, toxins in our environment comes in a little brown bottle with a white cap on it it's called a pharmaceutical medication all drugs are toxic all of them are poison all of them have side effects and all of them can kill you if they can't they're not a pharmaceutical drug because all drugs are administered to a thousand laboratory animals they keep increasing the dosages until half of them die that's called an LD50 rating, which is a lethal dose, 50 percentile, that's held in contrast to a therapeutic dose, which is what the doctor gives you. And every year, over 100,000 people die with a therapeutic dose. All drugs are toxic. Now, when you put foreign chemicals in the body, it's like dropping a hairdryer into the sink when it's plugged in. It tends to short-circuit the system. It breaks down the body's ability to function normally. And what they're finding is this is that in order for the, if you only have one or two of these molecules in your, in your food or in your diet, the body has to make the additional ones. But in order for the body to convert one molecule to the next molecule, to the next and so forth and so on, there's between 9 and 34 enzymatic reactions are needed. A lot of vitamin, mineral, and trace element is needed, which is depleted a lot from our diet. And a huge, a huge amount of energy is needed for the body to do.